Do you want to immediately sound like a more advanced piano player, even if you haven't had years of experience? Well, you know what you can. In this video, I am sharing how to create suspended chords, usually called sus chords, and how to improvise your own songs using these. Now, if you are absolutely new to playing piano, I recommend hit pause, go back and watch the other videos in this series. We are building up week to week and using what we've learned before in each video. For example, today we are using rhythm patterns and chord progressions that we have from previous videos. So please go ahead and check those out. Don't worry, this is YouTube. You can always come back. Also, be sure to stay to the end because I'm gonna be sharing the name of a iconic song that honestly uses suspended chords in a really amazing way. Um, you're totally going to know the song and be really surprised at how suspended chords can make things sound really incredible. I'm Rosemary Penner from Must Love Music and I make learning piano simple, fun, and interactive with creative ideas and resources. Be sure to grab some paper and pencil because we're going to get started with these suspended chords. Chords, like people, come in many different shapes, sizes, and sounds. Um, okay, people don't typically come in different sounds, but you get the idea. Oftentimes, and what we've often done here, is we have built a chord on the first, third, and fifth, so first, third, and fifth notes of a scale. So for example, C, right? Or uh, what about G major? G, B, D, A minor, A, C, E, and F major. F, A, C, and we can play these in any order, but there, it doesn't change the fact that each one of those is built on those three notes, or yeah, those three notes. So we've played these chords, right? Well, now we're gonna add a suspended chord, and what I had let you know was they're often called sus chords, S-U-S, -S, and that's because of the text abbreviation used in the music. We suspend a note from the chord and play a neighbor note, a note right next to it. So here is our chord progression. Go ahead and write it down. So one, five, six, and four, okay? If you need to pause the video, you can always go back and write that down. I find having it in front of me makes it a little easier to play and remember what I'm supposed to do. So the chord progression that we are using is actually the same chord progression we used in our putting major and minor chords together, part one. Um, and so if you're not sure what notes are in those chords, go back to that video. You can definitely see what they are there. I'm gonna learn this through improvisation. Let's go with our left hand chord bridges. Okay, so one, two, one, two, and A minor, and F major, do that with me. C and G and A and F. Excellent, if you need to pause the video, you can always come back. All right, in our right hand, what we're gonna do is suspend this second. So it's gonna be a sus2 chord. Rather than playing C major for our first chord, we're gonna take that middle note and we're gonna play the neighbor note to the left of it. Okay, so that's a sus2. There you go. And actually, you know what, I can see already, we're probably gonna run out of space. Uh, we'll be okay. Okay, now let's do the same thing with our G major chord. So instead of G, B, D, we're gonna play our neighbor note to the left. Okay, A. And then F. So let's put those together. One. Oh, actually, you know what? Hold the pedal the whole time, okay? That right hand pedal, or it's, I, <laughs> right foot pedal, the one far right, it'll make it sound really dreamy. One, two. You could play them separated. Okay, 
Now let's try this a different way. We're gonna suspend the fourth, okay? So your hands were pretty high up. We're actually gonna move down and we're gonna play octaves, okay? So let's do a quick review of octaves. One, two, three, one, two, three, and A, two, three, and F, together, C and G and A and F. Good. All right, let's put these together. Um, what we're going to do is actually we're going to go down this time, okay? Our right hand plays a suspended fourth, so instead of this, We're gonna play. Uh, let's let's leave out a note. We're gonna go four, middle note, at side of the chord, G major, four, three, four, five, A minor, same thing, and F. That right there, that's that's why we're not holding the other two notes. <laughs> that particular chord. Let's put this together. And again. Not bad, right? Okay, now we're gonna suspend the sixth. That means that top note of the chord, what we're gonna do is go up. So, two, three. Can you do that with me? One, hold it, two, three, and normal chord. So how was that? Learning through improvisation. I know usually I walk you through the chords a little bit more, but because we've done it before, I knew you could do it. So let me know. Did your improvised songs that you created today sound more advanced than if you had just played those regular chords? Think back a couple videos ago. Um, are your songs sounding more advanced? Adding this little tweak. And isn't it amazing that just by going up or down from one of those chord notes, it changes the sound so much, right? Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite sound? Which was your favorite suspended chord? Was it the second? Was it the fourth? Or was it the sixth? Let me know in the comments below. And I did tell you, I was going to tell you, didn't I? The iconic song that uses suspended chords so incredibly well is Let It Be by the Beatles. Oh my goodness, this song, it's, once you realize that they're using suspended sixth and fourths and all sorts of other stuff, then the song becomes so much easier to learn. So let me know, um, are you a fan of that song as well? Boy, I'm asking you to tell me a lot, aren't I? Anyways, um, in the next video, I am sharing another fantastic pattern that's going to help take your piano playing into a completely new genre of music. So I can hardly wait to share that with you.